talking to you about entering the character of Christ. The principle is this. The more powerful you become, the more humble you should be. The more powerful you get, the humbler you should, you should, manage, should be. Now, that is totally different from the principle of the world. The more powerful I get, the more arrogant I become, or the more visible I become, and or the more crushing I become. That is the problem with people who wield power of leadership today. And I talk about everyone, including myself. I have to, sometimes, when I see that, you know, because I have people, you know, I have people go before me who carry my Bible, who carry my laptop, you know. Sometimes I have to say to myself, carry your own laptop. Serve your own water. Drive your own car. Wash your own car. Look for whatever it is people would not normally do and go do it. Do you know the reason is because the more powerful you get, if you don't tame that desire, that power, you become draconian. Because everything works seamlessly. Everything works on auto cruise. You just forget that you are a human being. You forget you are a human being that has to deal with issues. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. When we talk about power, you can be talking about the issue of, for instance, financial power. The more you get, the more you should give. It's part of the manifestations of power. You see, power can be organizational power, as in the power of, as a leader or a CEO of an organization, or it can be someone who is making, who is making money. You see, the devil will trip you if your wealth is growing and you are becoming more economically powerful and you are becoming less sharing. So this is the principle. As you become more economically empowered, you have to sit down and say to yourself, unto whom much is given, much is expected. What do I need to do that is revolutionary bigger than what I did two years ago or last year. Because that is the pathway to greatness in the kingdom. Hallelujah. So when a, a, when a leader who is powerful continues to humble himself, he becomes more powerful. He can humble himself, he becomes more powerful. Humble himself, he continues more powerful. People will never be able to know the secret of your success. Oh, yes. Let me tell you this. Well, your success is not because you have a title or because you have the money in the bank. Your success is because you have the favor of God upon your life. So what makes you more powerful continually is the favor of the Lord upon your life continually. Now, to, to make sure that favor does not leave you so that you don't become like Saul who started and in the spirit and ends up with the mediums. Yeah, I'm telling you that. What makes us powerful ultimately, and I want to be an ultimate powerful ultimately. You see, I want to grow, 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 increase, build influence continually and still have the favor of God. Praise the Lord. There's nothing in my life, personal life, I'm going to tell this in my heart, there's nothing that scares me in life about 
be relevant for a time and become irrelevant after a while. I will never, you know, I will never be relevant. I will grow myself. I will submit myself to the process. Whatever I will enter into the character of Christ always. That's the way to be great. Anything outside that, you will be great for ten years, and after that, people never knew you ex ever existed. All right, we're talking about. Now, let's talk about another principle. Talking about the character of Christ, let me show you another principle. The book of Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 to 5. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete, com my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose, do nothing out of what? Selfish ambition or vain conceit but in humility, do what? Consider others better than yourself. In what? So it takes you to be humble to be able to think, Pastor Fumi is better than me. Shade is better than me. Sego is better than me. You know? To actually be able to say, you're better than me. I'm to be able to actually defer to them and say, you're better than me. And he says this. Each of you should look, verse 4, each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Are you seeing the attitude? Are you seeing, I'm, I'm talking about the Christ character now. It says your attitude, because all this is an attitude, it says your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Listen to this. It says, who being in the very nature God, how did the Bible describe him? Who being in the very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. Wow. This is my opportunity. Grab it. I don't know when this opportunity will come again. Be smart. If they put it in your hand by mistake, you better hold on to it. Grab it. It says, but he made himself nothing. Now you see that he's something. Is he something? What is he? He's a king. He's God. That's who he is. So, <laughs> but what did he do? By choice. Now, that, now that is, that's how Christ thinks. I'm talking about how to think. Because you don't know a person's action until you first of all know his thinking pattern. The idea of Christ is, I am God. There's no question about that. But deliberately, I will make myself. Now, what you see today is everybody trying to say that they are something. Deliberately. Everybody is trying to push. Branding is a big thing today. For corporates, for individuals, for everybody. Everybody is branding. Everybody is saying, I am something. Can't you hear me? I am something. I am something. Even though he was God, he was in the very nature of God, he made himself nothing. Look at this. Verse 7. But making himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. Are you seeing this thing? Took the nature of a servant, the nature of human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. Is he man? What is he? Come on, somebody give me feedback. What is he? But what, what has he become? Made himself that. He humbled himself and became obedient to death. Even the death on the cross. Verse 9. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place. And gave him the name that is above every name. Now that is the name that you use today. You use that name in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. Do you know how that name came about? 
it came the bad not because he grasped it, but because he gave it. By the mention of that name of Jesus, every knee bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. There is no controversy, even in the kingdom of darkness, that Jesus is the real king of kings and the Lord of all lords. That's why when you wield that name in the place of prayer, demons say, all right, they back off. Because that name has resonance. That name has power. That name has weight in the spirit. But physically speaking, that name was won by a servant. It was won by a man. It was won by a man who died. One thing about the, about the, the five things I want you to see here. Number one, Jesus, it was, he emptied himself. He laid aside the, 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 the glory that he has with the Father. Emptying himself. If you're going to be really great, and let's talk about greatness a little bit here. You are too full of yourself. If you really want to be great and you really mean, you are really sincere about being great, empty yourself a little. Empty yourself a lot. You are too full of yourself. Have you heard that before? People say to you, you are too full of yourself. Secondly, not only did he empty himself, he also became incarnate. He took upon himself the human form. How can God take on human form? Gosh, don't take on human form. But you know Jesus? Jesus is God. But he came down to be like a man. He became incarnate. He allowed himself to go into a womb and go through a process of nine months. He allowed himself to be birthed in that like normal birth process. He allowed a midwife to slap his bum when he wasn't crying early. When he came out of the blood. You know why he was doing that? Because he knows I'm the ultimate king. But these people would never be able to touch my greatness if I don't become humble. If I don't become incarnate. So one of the greatest miracles of humility was the incarnate birth of God. Oh yes. It wasn't just a little baby born in the Mary in the manger. It was God wrapped in a swaddling cloth. Third, he became a servant. That's assuming the lowest, the lowest level of existence. A servant of all. Now, I'm the pastor of this church. If they said to me, Pastor, uh, can you help us carry the pulpit? The people want to dance. How many people know that? I'll think about it twice. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just been playing with you. He said, someone said, we won't allow you. He said, these are the people that kill the, the leader. He said, we don't even allow you. And it's true. They will not even allow me. You get it? So I have to, do, I have to look for a way to carry the people behind their back. Because if I give them room, they will not do what? How many people know each time you do not allow the leader to do what he's supposed to do, you set him up for instant failure? Oh, yes. Every leader needs to know how to carry his own water sometimes and carry his Bible and carry his leg. Is your leg, is your body, carry it. <laughs> See, Jesus became servant. Let me continue. Then, fourthly, he decided to die. Now, gods don't die. That singular act of accepting to die for humanity is a condescending of himself. That me and me will not kill me. Insult. So he condescended to die. To which it was not natural libel. As a matter of fact, death would not have been able to conquer him and kill him if more that he was carrying the sins of the world. Because sin opens you up to death. That's the only way. Death will have struck Jesus, he will have died. 
but that he was carrying. If he wasn't carrying the sin of the world, death didn't have that power. Because he is God. And gods cannot be killed by death. So the fact that he even died meant not only did he come down in human flesh and become someone, he now decided to submit himself to the process that consumes all human flesh, which is death. Now, he didn't die by firing skull. He didn't die by the electric chair. You know, everything about Jesus was a lesson in humility. He died with the cross. Now, the death on the cross is the most disgraceful death anybody can ever die. As a matter of fact, cross, dying on the cross, being nailed to the cross, was a punishment reserved for the meanest of all slaves. So that it can serve as an example for other slaves not to be made that mean. So they, put, they take you, nail you, nail your hand, put you in the midst of the road, so that all other slaves from all the adjoining cities can learn a lesson never to be mean. It was a death reserved for slaves and the worst of criminals. That's why, that why it was a choice between Barabbas and himself. But Jesus submitted himself to that process. See, if we are his disciples, if we are people who are like him, then we have to enter into his character. This arrogance have to go. This self advertisement have to go. They have to be self emptying. Hallelujah. So the first value of Christ is, is humility. The second one I want to talk about is spirituality. Not canality. I spoke a little bit about this uh, when I talked talk about man. In the book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, the Bible says, God formed man out of the dust. So man is dust. Incidentally, Satan, the serpent, feeds on dirt. Galatians chapter, oh, sorry, Genesis chapter 3 verse 14 says that, that and God gave a decree and says, you Satan, because you deceived the woman, you will eat, you will crawl on your belly in the dust and you will eat the dust the rest of your life. So Satan, Satan or the serpent feeds on the dust. That's why every time you, bring, you put yourself in the place where Satan can feed on you, okay, it subdues you. Now, when I talk about the dirt, dust or the dirt, I'm talking about the state of the soul of man. Continually, you have to push yourself, put yourself in the place where your mind is purified and your mind is leaning toward the things of the spirit. The next thing you need to do now is, as you receive the engrafted word, you now decide to do something about it and say, I will submit myself to the demand of this word. Now, when you do that, you purify your thought because that's what the word of God does. The word of God purifies your thought. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says, the word of God is quick and alive and that it can discern the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So that's what the word of God does. It purifies your thought life. As, you, as you're going through the word of God right now, the only God is saying to you, you see, I told you that yesterday. You see, I told you that last week. You see, I've been warning you about this thing. God, you see, I'm bringing you out to hear it again. You are hearing it again. Now, leave this place and go and make a decision. Many of you are hearing something that the Holy Spirit is talking to you about just because the word of God is filtering your thought. And it's good because the Holy Ghost is still able to reach you. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So it's important for us to not allow Satan to feed on our mind. Bible says do not give the devil a foothold. So, one of the things you need to do is you need to submit yourself to more to the things of God's spirit. Don't forget I told you, you can never rise above the influence factor on your soul. If the spirit of God is influencing your soul, you will, you will release actions that are spirit-filled and are spirit-led. If the spirit of darkness or the flesh is leading your soul, you will exhibit I, I really feel a lot for married people. You know, there's a whole lot of talk about marriage and why marriages are crumbling. And, and, I see, and I see it because I'm married. I see, I see the issue. Number one, there are wrong mentalities, wrong philosophy people have about marriage. Someone thinks it's inferior, someone thinks it's superior. Okay? Wrong thinking. Sometimes someone, 
people have a sense of entitlement. Because I'm a woman, I'm entitled to this. Because I'm a husband, I'm entitled to this. Wrong thinking. You hardly see people, two people going into a married relationship saying, I'm there to empty myself. How, how defective can that, can that be? How more difficult? You are from a poor background and you're saying, I will not marry anyone. Who's fat? I know someone today. Who got married? Who got, who got, who wants to wait to marry someone, someone's daughter of a very rich man? Only for him to find out three years to the marriage that the man actually is not rich. He had just been scammed. Thinking patterns. These are the things that are destroying people in individuals in marriages. Wrong expectations, wrong philosophies, wrong understanding, wrong expectations. Not self-emptying. Not people going to the and say, I'm just here to serve this man. I'm here to serve this woman. I always tell people this. and I, It's my principle. It's my philosophy. I got it from the word of God. God spoke this to me. There is no single person, and this, I'm talking to this for men, there is no woman that a man cannot marry if he's, if he's a believer. However terrible she may be, if you go into that relationship with the right understanding, with the right thinking pattern, not to be served, but to serve, everyone responds to service. But everyone fights arrogance. Oh yeah. Doesn't matter how much you are paying me. If you are arrogant, if you are my boss and you are arrogant and you, one day I'll look for a way to free myself from your hold. Oppression has never been the solution to leadership. Humility of heart is. And so Jesus Christ paid the price and went through the cross and our great grandfathers nailed him to the cross. And everybody booed him and jeered at him and they stoned him and they spat at him 2,000 years ago. Today, you cannot mention victory, deliverance, hope, change, transformation, and eternity without mentioning the name of Jesus. Ultimately, who is the victor? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I cannot hear you. It doesn't matter what lies they tell that the disciples went to steal his body. That he actually did not die. He actually did not resurrect. It was something that happened. It was a, it was a lie. He went to the grave. He died. He rose again. And he's Lord and King forever. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And if I want to have that ultimate victory, I need to enter into his character. There is nothing you fight for in your flesh that you ever keep. You have to let God give it to you. For no man can have a thing except it be given to him by God. You're contending too much. You're contesting too much. You're fretting too much. Colossians 3 verse 2. Set your minds. Someone say me minds. Someone say me minds. I'm thinking you have to think. Set your minds on things above. That means make sure, redesign the way your mind thinks. So take your mind off physical things and things that are mundane and are, you, can, you can see. It says set your minds on things above. Picture the things that are above. So what are the things that are from above? Things of love. Kindness. Faith. Praise the name of Jesus. And many things you see as you read the scriptures. It says, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hid with Christ in God. Hallelujah. People, people don't know what prosperity is. Because this is prosperity. This is life eternal. Anybody who truly wants to succeed needs to know this. Anybody who truly wants to be great needs to know this. Who is greater than Jesus the Christ? Who is? It, who, who, who else has volumes been written about than this man that died like a servant? 
Because that name is powerful. That name is strong. That name is the holy up for the earth. So when people say, I want to be great, I ask you. You want to be great? You don't like how Christ became great? You want to be successful? You don't like how Christ was successful? <laughs> I don't know whether you really love yourself. You should be great like him. Hallelujah. Romans. I think I'll read that. Romans chapter 12 verse 16. Live in harmony with one another. That's not what we call being cantankerous. Some people are so difficult to relate with. You say this, they'll be saying this. How many people are in church? Huh? Oh, yes. They play the devil's advocate in everything. Even when they know they are wrong, they stick. Because they do not understand how to behave. Live, you say this, what does it say? Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. How many people know this is uh, an issue? People talk about leverage. You shouldn't be playing with the small boys. You should be playing with the eagle. You are, you are an eagle. Don't fly with the chicken. See, in instances, there are people who are, you are great, but there are people who are lower than you. The way we know that you are really great is how you are able to serve those who are higher than you and those who are lower, lower than you. And this issue of pride, I find that it's something that we all need to deal with. Because the Bible says, God looks at the problem from afar off. We'll be delighted and greatly inspired to talk into the books written by Takumo and Fumi Johnson. Get the best-selling The Secret Black Book of Wealth by Fumi Johnson and start a journey into economic success. Must I Submit is another great book from Fumi Johnson with great insight into the man and wife question. And from Takumo Johnson comes the classic Life Out of the Box, also available as an audiobook. This telecast has been brought to you through the support of Chain TV Partners. For partnership, counseling and further inquiries, contact us at Chain TV, the Capstone Church with our walls, 360 Motola Mohammed Way, Yaba, Lagos. You can call us on telephone numbers 0802-318-2030 or 01-893-8243 or you can send an email to capstone underscore c at yahoo.com or help desk at the capstoneonline.com you can also visit our website at www.thecapstoneonline.com thank you for watching Capstone, church, we